Hi everyone, it's Kelsey from the blog westmanacademyhomeschool.com and today we are going to be making Mommy and Me aprons. To start off, I am just going to be cutting out the pieces for my apron. I will then cut out the pieces for my five-year-old daughter's apron and my one-year-old daughter's apron. I did purchase three yards of fabric. If you do want exact measurements for different sizes for adults and children, you can find that on my blog post at westmanacademyhomeschool.com. The first thing I am going to be working on is the bib. This is going to be the top part of all the aprons. I am using a checkered pattern fabric, which is awesome because it is super easy to know where to cut, where to sew, how to fold, because you can just follow the straight lines. So if you are just starting out or you wanna make this a little bit easier on yourself, definitely get a fabric that has straight lines on it so that it's easy to know where you should be. After pinning my hem down, I did do about a half inch total. I am going to just be sewing a straight stitch all the way down on the inner portion. If you sew your stitch too close to the edge, everything that you folded will unravel. I am trying to sew as close to that line of the checkered piece as I can. That way my stitch is as straight as possible. Then I'm going to be creating a gathering stitch. Make sure you have hemmed all four sides and then change your tension and your stitch length to as high as they can go. On my machine, it is five for stitch length and nine for tension. This is going to create a gathering ruffled look. Make sure that you don't front and back stitch because you will be pulling the strings to make the gather more bunched up or looser. You can pretty much change where the ruffles are and how close they are. And then afterwards, you are just going to create a straight stitch front and back over top or right underneath your gathering stitch. Here, I am just moving my ruffles closer together. I created a bib piece that was a little bit too big for me, but I did alter the measurements on my blog post. So I do have small, medium and light and large sizes available so you know how big a piece to get for yourself. Mine ended up being a little bit too big, but <laughs> it's totally fine. That's why I create mine first and then the measurements for my blog post second. So here I am just creating that straight stitch. This is going to make sure that your ruffles stay in place. Your gathering stitch, you can pull it out or leave it in, totally up to you. And then I am just going to do the same thing for the bottom piece of the bib. As you can see, I did not create a hem. I just went ahead and created that gathering stitch. I'm going to pull on both ends, create the ruffle to where I want, and then create a, and then it's so a straight stitch over top of it to ensure that my gathering stitch stays in place. I'm then going to be cutting out the pieces for my straps. I am taking this larger piece and I will cut it in half. And then I'm going to be cutting out my belt piece, which I did use the entire width of the three yards. To create the belt, you're going to want to turn your fabric inside out, make sure that the good sides are facing each other, and create a seam 
down the side and on one of the shorter sides. I'm then going to be turning the fabric inside out. I'm going to use some scissors and fold the side that is open under, create a top seam, kind of a finishing seam, and I'm going to continue that all the way around. This is going to help the fabric lay down flat and give it a finished look since we did have to close up the top by creating a seam. Following the same steps that I used for the bib, you are going to be doing this for the skirt. The only difference is the bottom of the skirt will be left as a hem. You will not create a gathering stitch at the bottom. In order to connect both the bib and the skirt to the belt, you are going to be lining up the seam of both. If you line up the top part of the gathering ruffles, you will see that seam. And in order to hide the seam, you want to, want to make sure that you sew right underneath it. Then when you turn it the right side, like I showed you, the seam won't be showing on either the belt or the bib. So you will have the ruffle part on the inside. It will not technically be shown while you were wearing the apron. Earlier in the video, I showed you how to create a hem using pins. This time I am going to show you using an iron. I actually prefer the pin method better, but whatever works and is easiest for you. I am creating my straps like this where I don't turn it inside out and then sew and turn it right back the, <laughs> to the right way. I am just going to create a finishing seam all the way around because these are so thin and I am the worst at turning the fabric back to the right side. So I am just going to skip that and flatten and finish it with a finishing seam. I am sewing the strap on to the top part of the bib right underneath the ruffle. I am going to be front and back stitching multiple times to ensure that the straps do not come off or move. You are going to be repeating all the same steps for your child or children's aprons. Also if you hear a snoring little girl, that is because one is currently on my chest right now as I am recording this video.
For the pockets, I am just creating the hem by folding over the little square pattern, front and back stitching all the way around. I keep my needle in place, but lift my foot and just continue to turn the fabric around. I am showing you this on my child's apron, but it is the same steps that I did to complete the pockets for my apron as well. We are going to be creating a gathering stitch along the top just as we did with the bib and the skirt, but we are going to leave the bottom part like we did the skirt as a hem. I'm just going to be ruffling the fabric to where I want it for the pocket and then you are going to be sewing on three sides of the pocket to the apron. Make sure that you leave the top open naturally. It seems like something that is obvious but it is easy to just continue to sew. You want to make sure that the ruffle part stays open so you can place things in your pocket. I am just going to be sewing up one side as you see here and then going ahead and sewing the other two sides. I did line my pockets up by counting the squares, another great reason for having a pattern that is symmetrical. Once I do this last side, I just stick my fingers in the pocket to kind of puff it up and move that edge a little bit inward so that my pockets pouch a little. Um, so you won't technically be sewing your pockets straight, they might begin to curve in towards the top. That completes this DIY Mommy and Me apron video. Thank you guys so much for watching. Again, if you would like step-by-step -step instructions you can print out or more in-depth information on the sizing chart, you can get that at westmanacademyhomeschool.com. Again, I'm Kelsey and I make videos on homeschool, homemaking, and creating a wholesome home.